Glass has been my long-term challenge on this channel, originally trying to make it from scratch and be optically clear enough to make lenses for various items from eyeglasses to a camera lens. But now with our Reset series, I face the new challenge of trying to make glass without modern tools, which is already proving to be just as big of a challenge. So let's see if I can pull off something the Romans excelled at, glass. Everything we use comes from 8,000 generations of collective innovation and discovery. But could an average person figure it all out themselves and work their way from the Stone Age to today? That's the question we're exploring. Each week, I try to take the next step forward in human history. My name is Andy, and this is How to Make Everything. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss the next step in this journey. Thank you to today's sponsor, Bright Cellar. Bright Cellar is a monthly wine subscription created by two MIT graduates who wanted to help people find the wines they love. All you have to do is take a less than 30 second quiz and the algorithm matches you with wines you're guaranteed to like based on your taste profiles. Each personalized wine comes with an educational card that provides serving and pairing tips. The more you rate and get feedback, the better your matches will be. If you don't like it, they'll give you a free replacement to your next shipment. If you sign up now, you get 50% off your first order of six bottles, $53 for six bottles, including shipping. So Bright Cellar sent me a sample here of six different wines to try out and I'm about halfway through and I'm quite enjoying them. I'm not a huge wine connoisseur but it's been really cool to try out a few different varieties that I don't normally try and uh, see, see what I like. So it's a fun way to kind of expand your palate and try out some new wines and it's very convenient because it gets shipped right to you. So check it out right now and you can get 50% off your first shipment of six bottles. That's $53 for six bottles of wine including shipping. So check it out. <laughs> In my previous attempts before the reset, the kiln or furnace to melt the glass at high enough temperature has been one of the largest challenges. Our first attempts involved a few varieties of makeshift kilns made from propane torches and fire bricks, but most often they struggled to reach a high enough heat. I even went out to Utah and got to meet Grant of King of Random and use his foundry to make what was very close to a clear glass. But ultimately it was switching to a modern electric kiln that had the best result. No fumes or other impurities from the gas to worry about. It was just a matter of getting the right glass mix. Just let it run overnight. Hopefully have some clear glass. Unfortunately, the electric kilns were often pushed to the maximum of their abilities and quite a few low-end kilns were sacrificed in the various glass and obsidian experiments I did. Now with the reset and having to attempt it in an historical way, my first attempt was to repurpose our iron smelled bloomery was not very effective at all. It's a shiny turd. It heated unevenly and destroyed our crucibles while still not actually getting hot enough to melt the glass. Then I attempted to build one with bricks and finally achieved the early steps of glass melting and forming, but not quite hot enough to fully form and effectively work into something. Cloudy chunk of glass here. The last two kilns proved to be a bit fragile and were both inevitably destroyed in the process of firing them. After spending a fair amount of time and money just to construct them, I wanted to make sure our next attempt would endure for many future firings and probably a lot of attempts to finally achieve this, and also hoped it was something that could be used both for making glass and also firing ceramics. So I upgraded to some high quality bricks and finally got a permanent location it could be built at. Now it's just a matter of tweaking and adjusting it until we can reach the maximum temperatures we need. But first, to be ready for when we can finally make the glass, we're going to need some glass tools. Most important, a blowpipe. A hollow metal tube used by glass blowers to force air into a gather of molten glass and start forming the shape of whatever container they're making. A complex forge, I challenged frequent guest Adri to try and forge one for us. Starting from a flat piece of stock iron, after beveling the edges, Adri carefully bends and works it over onto itself, eventually forge welding the two ends into a solid pipe.
Next, we'll need a crucible to hold the glass ingredients and get it to melt. For the materials of my glass, we've collected a variety of possible sources for them. Most historical and similar to the Romans would be the natron we collected from a lake in Wyoming, which is similar to the natron collected from the Nile that the Romans used for their glass. This salt is composed of primarily sodium carbonate, a fluxing agent that when mixed with sand lowers its melting point to achievable working temperature. An absolutely crucial ingredient for making glass. Other sources of fluxes we've explored is from the ashes of glass wart collected off the coast of the Gulf of Mexico and a similar pickle weed we found in Utah, both of which are burned and the ashes collected as a source of sodium carbonate. Also, one of my first attempts was with a similar fluxing agent, potassium carbonate, made from the collected and filtered ashes of hardwood trees. But by far the most powerful and effective flux I found was borax, which I was able to collect in Boron, California. Technically available to the Romans at the time, borax was not really an ingredient used for historical glasses. One of the first challenges with my kiln was getting the temperature control right. For trying to use it for ceramics, this proved to be a fatal error when things heated up much faster than anticipated and destroyed our initial batch of pottery we were trying to fire. This first initial heating of the kiln is crucial for ceramics, and a process called candling needs to be done, where candles or a small fire are used to slowly and gradually heat the kiln, driving out any moisture in the pottery that would otherwise cause it to explode. I attempted this with a collection of candles, but that proved to be too little heat for the size of my kiln. Then moved on to a small fire and practiced at slowly heating it. For making glass, this will also be important so that the crucibles containing my glass mix don't also explode because of thermal shock. Inside the kiln, I placed pyrometric cones. These are calibrated to specific temperatures and will start to melt to let me know what temperature range we were able to reach. Now on to test firing the kiln and honing it in. All right, so I did a couple of test firings to see how all this is working and uh, had a few issues, mostly a lot of smoke escaping, which also means there's a lot of heat getting out. Did a little bit of practicing with a candling method to try and slowly ramp up for making pottery. So our first attempt blew up a lot of our pottery because it got a lot hotter, a lot quicker than expected. So I've gone through and patched a lot of things, filled in the rest of the arch and built a bit of a door here, which should hopefully seal up this chamber a little bit better. Should be minimal smoke coming out of it. I also narrowed in the the door hole, so we lose less heat and less smoke comes out of it. Most of the smoke is now going through the chimney, which we're supposed to, so that's a good sign. And then I'm also in the process of adding a lot of layers to the outside of it. The outsides are pretty vertical, so it's hard to get the clay to actually stick to it and build it out. So I've been stacking sticks, which creates a lot of air pockets, which is good for insulation. So next up, we use a crucible that Lauren made, fill it with our sand and flux we've previously gathered, see if we can get hot enough to melt it. But ideally, we want to get to the Roman era glass, which doesn't use borax and just soda ash and lime with the sand. Should only need to get up to technically around 1700, fairly low temperature goal. My initial firings, I really only got up to around 1000, but uh, I think it's going to take a while to kind of just heat up the entire thing, then the temperature will start going up from there. Ideally want something up to 2000, possibly 2400 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's load this up, give it a shot and see if we can reach any temperatures that high.
All right, so we're going on nine hours now of continuously baking in the furnace, reaching about 1400 degrees. So I'm hopeful we can uh, potentially have some glass. 1400, I think, is about the lowest melting point with the borax. Hopefully we have something, potentially put the blow rod to use and maybe blow something. Still kind of new to glass blowing, so not expecting too much. Let's give it a shot and see, see what we got after all this work. It's definitely hot. That's a nice glow out just on the brick itself. Crucible's still there, so that's a good sign. Oops, that's the wrong end. <laughs> this metal is soft. Oh, look at that. That is glass. So the borax kind of separates, so I gotta mix it up a bit. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to. It's a very gooey. It's a good sign, but did not think we we're gonna get a good result here. <laughs> Very promising. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's too liquidy. I think it's the borax. So ideally we would bake it a lot hotter, get something a little bit more workable. If I just let it cool a little bit, it'll thicken up. Didn't think too hot would be the issue here. Damn. Kind of a lost cause trying to glass below this guy. That is definitely glass though. It's got a little bit of yellowness to it, which is from the borax. We have reached kind of the minimum threshold for success. After this, we gotta try a more uh, accurate Roman recipe and uh, that'll be something we can actually glass work a bit better. But this is a lot better than I was expecting. That is glass, very black. I think that's just from all the soot in the fire. That's really cool. That actually turned out a lot better than I expected. I was pretty pessimistic. It definitely took a while to get up to temperature and heat the entire thing up to heat. We did it in half a day and uh, we got glass. So the candling process is something you need to work a little bit more on because all of our ceramic crucibles ended up breaking. So we ended up switching to the steel one just because it would uh, not break. <laughs> I uh, got a little soft in the process, but um, it did hold up. Um, so these crucibles are going to need a little bit of work. So I'm very curious what the actual temperature reading of it is. Based on the color that the steel of the crucible got, I can estimate we probably reached temperatures around 1700 to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. But well, this is very promising. I'm definitely sure there are some tweaks we can do to improve it. I'm sure we can just continue to add insulation to make it even better. But I think the next step is going to be using an actual Roman glass recipe. That'll be a bit higher to temperature and uh, to actually work it is going to be uh, a little bit of a challenge. The borax makes this a little too soft, so not, not the best glass working. But I'm probably gonna try and find someone a little bit more experienced to help me, even though I have done this a few times. It'd be nice to have a pro to help me. Yeah, so I'm very happy with this results. There's been a, a lot of money to get just to here. A lot of labor to assemble it lot of clay and sand to make the insulation around it. Lots of days of adding to it, making it thicker and thicker. And then all of the wood. It was about $140 worth of wood. Huge pile. All pretty much gone now, but uh, actually did get something out of it. That's very promising. So hopefully we can uh, hone in even better and uh, start getting some glass made and some ceramics fired. Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. Wanna see us continuing in our advancement through civilization. Support us on Patreon, we really need your help. And you can follow along on Instagram at HGM Everything. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.